Here we go. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. The start of a game series that I love very much. I'm going to be playing the entirety of the first case in this video, so if you want to see more, just let me know. And to the people that have played this game before, please try and keep the spoilers to a minimum. Try not to ruin it for everyone else. Thanks. Okay, so I'm playing as Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney, and this is my first case. Now, to state the obvious, I am playing the DS version of this game. Um, although I think originally this game came out on the Game Boy Advance all the way back in 2001, I think. So it's quite an old game. So this wreck in front of me right now is the guy I'm defending for this first case. And from the looks of it, it looks like he's handling the pressure quite well. So, because this is the first case of the game, it's a little bit like a tutorial, and that's why we were shown who the killer was in the opening movie. So this should be quite easy. Yeah, that's the spirit. Right, I should just explain to you, I have played these games before, maybe three or four times each, so this is far from a blind playthrough. Um, I remember who the culprit is in most cases, but what I don't remember is how I figured that out in the game.
Okay, so if you look in the, well, I guess it'll be the top right when this is finished, you will see a choice of three people to choose from. Now, I know who the defendant is. It's Larry Butts, so let's choose him. Now, there aren't going to be many instances where you would like to look at the top right screen. It's only when I'm examining evidence or making a choice, really. Hopefully, the screen will be big enough that you can see everything clearly anyway. Yep, this is actually something we don't know, surprisingly. So, I'm gonna have to look it up. Okay, just as she says, I'm gonna touch the court record button, which is gonna be in the top right. So, now we get the evidence, okay? So, I've got my attorney's badge, which I always carry with me. Um, if I go along... I'll see Cindy's autopsy report, okay? So it's Cindy. Okay, if I go to profiles, I can see everyone involved in the case. So this is Mia, this is my boss. That's Larry Butts, the defendant, we know. Okay, now the victim here is Cindy Stone. And the prosecutor, I'm against, is Winston Payne. Okay, so we know now that it's Cindy Stone. Okay, we know this one already because we watched the opening movie, but, you know, let's go back to the court record, the autopsy report. Okay, the cause of death was loss of blood due to blood trauma. We already knew that, but there we go, we just checked. Okay then, the court accepted it into evidence, that's great, that means it's added to my list, and that means I can reference it whenever I want. Okay, there is something I should point out before we go any further, really. Uh, this court system is quite strange for many reasons, most of which you, you get into later on in the game. But I can tell you right now that the accused is actually guilty until proven innocent, not the other way around. So that means it really is just up to us to save Larry's bacon here. So, uh, yeah, no pressure.
Okay, so there's another little bit of evidence there. The passport. That's been added to the court record. I'll check that probably after the testimony. Yeah, I think she might be right. His emotions are running a little bit too high right now, and I think if he answers, it's uh, it's going to be over before it's begun. So I've got another little choice, and quite clearly I'm going to try and stop him from answering. Oh boy. He's not going to make this easy. No, he didn't do it, so I don't know what the fuck he's doing. He hasn't got anything to hide. Probably. <laughs> That's not exactly what I expected him to sound like. He looks familiar. Alright, so we're at the testimony, which is the most important part, and we know this guy did it, so we know he's going to lie. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna read it. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions, when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman. Not moving. Dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1pm. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. And so that's the end of the testimony. Which seems okay, it seems quite believable. But we know he did it, so he must be lying. Phoenix seems to be having a bit of a breakdown over there, but I think I've got this in the bag. Thank you. 
And I'll take a copy to peruse the shit out of too. Mia's explanation was exactly right. All I have to do is go through the testimony once again, but this time I have the option to press or present. Now, if you press someone, you ask them a question, you get more information out of them. But if you present, you present a bit of evidence and you show a contradiction in their testimony, and that is what I'm trying to do now. Right, now if you look at the main screen, you'll notice that five exclamation marks have just appeared, and they are basically my lives. If I harass the witness too much, or present a bit of evidence that actually has no bearing on what I'm talking about, they'll go down. And if I run out of exclamation marks, well, it's a game over. You may have picked up on this, but this is the part of the testimony that concerned me. If I go to present, and go to the autopsy report, I can see that she died between 4 and 5 p.m. So this isn't possible. That's fair enough, I guess. The judge thinks he's simply mistaken, and therefore he can testify again. Let's see what he conjures up this time. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I, I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Well, he's not thinking this through very well because that one's very easy to find a contradiction in. Okay, so he says there's a voice saying the time, probably coming from the television. That's not possible. Because I have the blackout record.
damn right the defense has a point. Okay, we're really wearing him down now. Sounds like he's getting quite desperate. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. He really is scraping the bottom of the barrel now. That is so obviously wrong. Okay, he didn't hear the time, he saw it. Fair enough, I have a problem with that one. A table clock in the apartment wasn't there, okay, fair enough. The murder weapon. The, the, the table clock was the murder weapon. No, that's not right. It was this statue. Okay, fair enough. It's a clock. It looks like a statue, but in fact it is a clock. But I want to know, how did he know that? Again, the opening introduction movie gave it all away, but we know he went into the apartment. Yes, Mr. Sowitz. I love that name, by the way. Explain yourself. <laughs> I'm afraid the toupee to the face doesn't explain that little detail away. I think we've just broken him.
Okay, and this is where the bullshit court system comes into effect again. There's actually a lot more evidence against Mr. Sowett than there is for Larry Butts. But unless I can prove outright that he was in fact the perpetrator, this has all been for nothing. This is all conjecture and hearsay. Well, I don't think examining the clock's batteries are going to do any good, or asking the neighbours. We have the clock right here, let's try sounding it. Look at the guy, he's sweating bullets, he's so desperate he's actually scraping the bottom of the barrel. He's actually dug out the barrel, he's now just digging underground. But it looks like he's still going to get away. Treat me like a criminal, he says. That's because you are one. You're not getting your hair back. So, can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? I can. Well, it's got to be the only piece of evidence that we haven't yet used.
<laughs> I like it. Okay, I managed to prove that Larry was innocent. Unfortunately, the other cases aren't all that easy. Um, okay. Was he even paying attention back there? Yeah, he's still feeling pretty down, so let's try and pluck his spirits up. I 
got to show him the clock. Jesus Christ. Was he even in the courtroom? And so ends the first case of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Now, I'm only going to continue this series if you want to see it, so um, as I said earlier, if you do want to see it, leave me a message, a comment, or a like, or something like that. Just, just let me know that you'd like to see more. Okay? Thanks for watching, guys.